This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The outgoing Hazleton Area School District Superintendent talks with our Lisa Sugart about his time in the area. Hi friends, family and mom, welcome and thank you for watching SSP TV News is available in HD on Service Electric Cable Vision Channel 513 and we are available anywhere in the world via the Samsung Productions app. Your headlines from SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker are available now. A search is underway for a new superintendent for the Hazleton Area School District. Tonight Lisa Sugar talks with the outgoing superintendent about his time with the district. The Hazelton Area School District will soon have a new face at the helm, and that is because the current superintendent of schools, Dr. Craig Butler, has submitted his resignation, and he will be heading on to a new adventure. First of all, congratulations on your new position as superintendent of the Saucon Valley School District in Pennsylvania. Uh, we're going to miss you. Thank you, Lisa. I've enjoyed my four years here in Hazelton. It's been a very rich and fulfilling experience for me. I guess let's take a look back. What do you see as, you know, some of the major accomplishments that you made while you were here? Because you started um, as the assistant superintendent under Dr. Francis X. Antonelli and then went up to the position of superintendent. Correct, Lisa. I did have the uh, privilege of serving under Dr. Antonelli for two years. And as we were talking earlier, I think that really eased my transition into the superintendent position. And I thank Frank for his his leadership and his mentorship of me, uh, those two years were invaluable in preparing me for uh, the last two years as superintendent. Um, areas where I think we've made great gains, I'd, I'd like to think that communication is one, uh, particularly communication with the board, uh, communication with the public, the transparency um, of the district and district affairs with our community, with parents, uh, I think that we made some great gains in that area, at least. Also, you were hosting meetings with the public. You had those meetings regularly. Yes, I think those outreach meetings uh, were a tremendous uh, advantage for Mr. Donati and I just to uh, know what uh, the outside concerns were regarding the district and celebrations for that matter, too. But it, uh, I think it also showed tremendous, as I said, transparency, openness, Willingness to listen to parents, uh, open for input and feedback from parents and stakeholders of the district. I think that may have been a real missing link before, and I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, I think we took gigantic steps in that area. I think also student achievement, Lisa. We, as you know, uh, you know we're we're trying to improve every year, every month, every day in the classroom. We are seeing some great gains in our elementary uh, grades in particular with our hybrid initiative. And I just received word today that uh, we, we saw some nice gains in our Keystone scores, particularly in algebra. And our middle school algebra students, uh, I'm bragging for the students and for our faculty and staff, 93% of the eighth graders who took the algebra Keystone scored at least advanced or proficient. 93 percent. That is a, um, a, a percentage that's an achievement that not a lot of schools can tell. So I think we're doing some good things in, in pockets and we're, uh, I believe the district will continue to expand uh, the improvement in student achievement and looking forward to that as well. And then perhaps the last area would be, uh, which I, um, with my leadership style, Lisa, that I, I take great pride in the fact that I hope we uh, continue to enhance the culture, a culture of respect and professionalism, trust and honesty, and really appreciating the work that all of our employees did in the school district each and every day. Lisa will have part two of her interview with Dr. Butler tomorrow on SSP TV News. Former Hazleton City Council member Karen Cabell was ordered to serve two years of probation. According to our media partner, The Standard Speaker, the 52-year-old Cabell was charged with arson, reckless endangerment, and reckless burning in connection with a fire at her home back in October. She pleaded guilty to a single felony arson count last week, and in return, prosecutors dropped the remaining charges. Now here's a segment that's good for your health. Let's see what Janine Mazurkevich is talking about this week at Saco Chiropractic. 
We are back here at Sacco Chiropractic, and right in the office, there are some other remedies that are natural that you could take advantage of. You can get educated on these products. We're with Jennifer Parker, and she's actually um, promoting doTERRA. So first of all, what is doTERRA? doTERRA actually is a company, and the uh, term doTERRA means gift of the earth, okay. and they truly are. So uh, what we do here is we bring in natural remedies to people that are looking for natural for alternatives mm -hmm. to enhance their chiropractic visit. So one of the things we do promote is the deep blue liniment and what it's used for is it's used as an inflammatory response. So it helps soothe aches and pains and discomfort, but it's a natural way for this liniment to go on because a lot of people are used to putting on liniments mm -hmm. when they're sore and their back hurts or their neck hurts. And between chiropractic visits and even prior to chiropractic visits, come in, you get your adjustment and you can maintain better. Um, it has some great natural ingredients mm -hmm. in like peppermint, wintergreen, um, for an analgesic pain relieving effect. It also has chamomiles, which people know help relax and soothe you. So it has two great chamomiles in. Mm -hmm. That's what gives it the beautiful blue color. And it also has two amazing oils called helichrysum and Othmanthus. And what they do is they actually work at cellular repair to start the healing process right away. So you're not getting that with a um, other synthetic mm -hmm. or over the counter relief. I'm usually cautious with my own children because they have allergies and I watch what they use, especially with my son. He plays baseball. Would he be able to use this on his arms and his legs? Yes, absolutely. Duterra actually um, uses research and development mm -hmm. and constantly looks for the most purest essential oils in the market. So what they do is they run vigorous tests on them to make sure for purity and potency. Okay. And a pure essential oil is actually void of proteins, which actually cause most essential oil um, reactions. Okay. So this one is safe, and we can always make sure, test your skin, and make sure that it's safe. But we've really not had too many effects. We, we find that more with your florals, like your lavenders mm -hmm. and your geraniums. People actually have a reaction to them a little bit more. But it's that cleansing property that pulls, that, pulls out that. And you're, and you're located right here in Sacco right Park. in the office. All right, stop by today. You're watching SSP TV News. Thanks, Janine. And just a reminder that our SSP TV programming is available tonight and every Wednesday from 6.30 until 8 p.m. on our High Definition Channel 513. And you can also catch a rebroadcast of SSP TV News tonight at 8 p.m. on both channels, Channel 13 and HD 513. Coming up next, get ready for a liftoff of another exciting astronomy segment with the Greater Hazleton Area Astronomical Society. And in sports, local motorsport journalist Dino Alberto is here and he'll talk about two local drivers approaching 100 wins on asphalt. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. The strive to revive the Hazy Pole campaign continues at the Hazelton YWCA. Part of the fundraising is being done through a list of races. Here's the details on how you can get involved. Hi, I'm Rob Gould. I'm the Aquatics Director at the Hazelton YWCA. We are holding many races this summer, but the next one up on our schedule is the Beware of Barracuda Youth and Adult Triathlon. So we have a youth triathlon on Saturday, which is a swim bike run, and you just saw some of our kids out here training for it. We swim five days a week at the Hazleton Y and at the high school, and then we bring these kids out here and we run around the lake and we time them. Our event, the Beware of Barracuda race, is gonna be held at the Eagle Rock Resort the youth, the kids race is on Saturday, and the adult is on Sunday. The adult race is a sprint distance race, so the distances are smaller. It's got a 750 yard swim, a two loop bike course, which is 15 miles, and a 5K run. And this year, we're gonna start up another event in conjunction. It's gonna be a super sprint, and we're hoping this will bring in more beginners or people that might have been interested in doing a triathlon, but thought the distances were too large. It's going to be a shorter swim to uh, 300 yards, a one loop bike, which would be about seven and a half miles, and a two mile run. 
So we have a very beginner friendly adult distance race going on this September at Eagle Rock. Back in 2003, the entire YMCA had a capital campaign and every area of the building was renovated except for the pool and the gym. So as you can see here, there's a lot of things that need attention at the pool. The walls, the exterior of the walls need to be scraped and resurfaced. The benches need to be replaced. The blocks are about 20 years old and rusting. And the door frames, uh, they have not done well with the humidity. They're all rusting. And there's some mechanical, there's some items in the mechanical chlorine room that need attention. So the money that we raise are going to fix a lot of issues that we have at the Hazleton Y pool. If you're interested in any of our races this summer, you could find all the information at hazyracing.com. You can find information on the races, registration links to online registration, or if you have questions, you can contact me directly from the website. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. Some wind in our area as it's blowing around the leaves. And here's our national forecast, or excuse me, our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, increasing clouds with a low around 62 degrees. Thursday, we have a 20% chance of showers before 10 a.m., then a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms after 4, mostly cloudy with a high near 77. At night, we're up to a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy, low of 62. New rainfall amounts between a quarter and a half of an inch possible for our Friday. Friday, expect showers mostly cloudy with a high near 75, 70% 70 chance of rain. Friday night, 50% chance of showers mostly cloudy, low of 57. The weekend looks good, partly sunny on Saturday with a high near 73. At night, partly cloudy, low of 56. And then Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 75. At night, we're back down in the 50s under mostly clear skies. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High Food Drive-In, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Open daily 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sundays and holidays 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. Stop by for our ice cream and yogurt, now featuring fat-free, no sugar-added soft frozen yogurt with flavors like vanilla, strawberry, and strawberries and cream. We also have burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. And like us on Facebook. Scott McAndrews is back with us, the president of the Greater Hazleton Area Astronomical Society. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the actual society. Founded in 1977, you've been the president for a while now. Give us some of the background. He said it's a very welcoming society. I don't have to be scared. In the last segment, I got the um, swan, one of the constellations, the tail and the head mixed right. up. You guys wouldn't make fun of me. You would correct no. me and help me out. No, no that's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what we're doing. If you're interested in astronomy, uh, the Greater Hazelden Area Astronomical Society is always out there. We, we meet every second Saturday of the month. During the summer months, we're usually doing a star party on the second Saturday. The second Saturday in August, we'll be at Nescapec State Park. So uh, if they have any questions, they can always stop by, or you can visit our webpage. And we're also on Facebook. Uh, just use the initials Greater Hazelden Area Astronomical Society. And we also have a webpage.org. So... You find us there, and we're very easy to get to. Uh, everybody that's involved in the society is very, very open to any questions you have. You can't ask any stupid questions <laughs> because there are none. I mean, it's, it, we have stupid answers for you. <laughs> but we're a fun group, and uh, you don't need to be intimidated at all. It's a, we're a family group, too, so we get along. Everybody's just a fantastic group. I, I love being part of that. You said something in a previous segment, too. You mentioned dark sky. And I thought, yeah. hey, I live in Cunningham. I'm going to see a pretty dark sky. I don't. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. it's very hard to observe some things. Now, you guys have a spot out near Eckley. Explain um, what, what it looks like out there. And you maintain it. It looks like a very beautiful site there. It is. It is. Uh, we purchased that many, many years ago. Uh, we're slowly trying to improve it. And sooner or later, one of our goals is to have an observatory a permanent observatory built there because we have a very nice scope that we can use. We just don't have, uh, you know, the building around it. Uh, we do have a, uh, a trailer that we do some meetings at, and we do have a nice little pad that's powered with electricity. So it's enough uh, space for a couple of people to get out there and take a look around. And uh, we're out there as much as, off, uh, as we can. And if you become a member, which it costs $24 a year. <laughs> <laughs> Reasonable, right? It's, yeah, it's pretty expensive. But, but the, the, the fact is, is that you get to go out to the site. We, we give you a key to the site. Oh, so you okay. can get out there to the dark skies. Uh, you can borrow scopes from the club. And any other information that we have or any other stuff like that, it's, it's, it's you know, 
That's the best thing to That's do. That's a good deal. I think I'm sold. I'm going to sign okay, up. I'm right go. after right, this. We'll and now this guy, how different is it for people who might be like, come on, how different could it be from, you know, here in Hazleton? I mean, is it that drastic of a difference out there? Yeah, the darker, the, the further away you are from light, uh, the better. Right. Uh, we were out in Colorado and New Mexico in April, and a lot of great dark skies out there. So uh, you don't, you do want to get away as far away from lights as possible. The darkest, the darker, the better. So, right. so that will work out. Now you mm -hmm. mentioned, last question I have for you, you mentioned star parties. What happens at these things? Like what if people are interested, maybe they don't have their own telescope. I mean, they want to stop by. What, what happens at a star party? Okay, we do, basically I do a little program explaining about the society. I explain about how light pollution is and how they can abate it. Okay. Uh, we talk also a little bit about what you're going to find in the night sky. We'll show you star charts and we'll show you around and how you can find through the stars. And then following that, if the skies are clear, we have our scope set up and we look at the things that I talked about. That is excellent. What a wealth of information. We've done three segments with Scott. We hope you will come back to please to come do back. some more. <laughs> look up this summer. And if, and if you're lost out there in the universe, you don't know what to look at, get in touch with the Greater Hazleton Area Astronomical Society. Had a lot of fun with Scott. I hope you have fun looking at the green screen, matching up some of your numbers. These are your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. Pick 285, pick 3195, pick 47751, pick 586306. The wild number is four. It's race week at the Pocono Raceway, and we talk with local motorsport journalist Dino Alberto. He's here the next two days, but today we're focusing on local racing. We'll be right back. Time now for sports on SSPTV News. If you're trying to keep track of Dino Alberto this week, don't because it's going to get crazy. I know you're here now. After that, I don't want to know. He's going to be in between the Pocono Raceway, running around through local tracks. It's a big week for him. It's a big week for racing fans in our area. Dino, thank you for coming back. Okay, let's start um, with the local scene a little bit, Dino. I wanted to ask you about this. Um, Evergreen, August 19th, is their fourth enduro race of the season, and there's a soccer mom minivan enduro coming up. Um, have you covered something like this before? Is this part of it? Was this popular the first time they did it? You know, first of all, the, the enduros are, are really, really, ta they've taken off at that track. Jason uh, Makarevich, who was the promoter there, does a terrific job um, of, of getting the word out of, of what that uh, deal is all about. So enduro racing... Um, it, it's just basically get out there with a street car, put a, some sort of safety uh, uh, regime into it, uh, re uh, safety bars and what have you, and you go out there and you just have a blast. Now, some guys really know what they're doing. They're racing for the money. They're racing for points. They do have titles. So they've taken this to another step. You know, what else can we do to make this interesting? Uh, they've gotten these minivans now out there. I, I did see one of them a few months ago, uh, early on in the season. Uh, they had a couple of them show up. As a matter of fact, they took passengers with them. It was pretty cool. They're beeping the horn and people are waving at them. They're waving back. So, um, you know, the soccer mom uh, uh, minivan uh, Enduro is what they're calling it. Um, it should be interesting. It's fun is really what it comes down to. It's a fun deal. Well, that's a fun week, and I had fun reading two of your recent articles in the Standard Speaker, Dino, about local drivers who are approaching 100 wins on asphalt, and that's a, that's a big deal around here. That is a big deal around here. You know, you, you think about all the drivers that we have seen come through the ranks around here over the years. Richie Jensen, uh, he, he's hit that mark. Uh, I know the Hirschmans, they've raced here locally at Evergreen before they got onto the big uh, scene running on the tours. This is where they hit their mark, uh, and, and several others. You, you saw us mention about Ross Perchak. This guy is approaching 200 wins. He does it in a micro sprint, but it's been a long time since we've seen two drivers, not one, but now two drivers that are right there ready to hit the 100 win mark. And that's really a, a great milestone. Eric Beers and Brian DeFebo. And these guys, they are the absolute kingpins of their, uh, of what they do. And uh, um, they've won the last two events here uh, in a row down at Mahoning Valley Speedway, but they still do race. Uh, Brian does come back up to uh, Mahoning Valley, or excuse me, to uh, Evergreen. And they have two big modified races coming up in August. So I think it's a really cool deal. It's a great time for local uh, asphalt shorts track fans to be a part of something this big. You know, you had a lot of numbers in, in your column all about this, but what stood out to me was three decades you said they've both been doing this. They've been around for a while. They have been. 
Eric Beers began his career in 1986 at Dorney Park Speedway. I don't know how many people watching right now knew that Dorney Park had a racetrack, but it actually went back to the 1930s. It ran through 1986. It was just a one-fifth of a mile uh, paperclip type racetrack. That racetrack is actually the pinnacle of what we do here locally between Mahoning Valley, Evergreen, as terms of uh, asphalt racing. All the drivers, actually, that is where they got their uh, mark started. Uh, ev that closed in 1986. Mahoning Valley reopened in 1987. Evergreen had reopened then in 1988. But all those drivers needed an outlet. They needed an avenue to go to. And uh, obviously, Mahoning and Evergreen was w at where it's at for them. But where did it all start? It started there. And that's where Eric Beers began his career. A couple of years later, uh, Brian DeFebo in a thriller car got started down at Evergreen Raceway. Those boys have been going ever since. And they... They do a good job. We have part two of that interview for you tomorrow as Dino will talk about the races this weekend at Pocono Raceway and a change in leadership at the track. In other sports news, the Cubs are good at baseball. They beat the White Sox 7-2 on Tuesday. Now Joe Madden's team sits a half game out of first place in the NL Central. Jake Cave continues to hit for the Rail Riders. He was 2-5 for five in their win. Rail Riders are now 64-38 and 38 in the season first place in the International League North Division. Tonight, the United States men's national soccer team plays for the Gold Cup Championship against Jamaica, the team that knocked them out in the semifinals in 2015. The game is at 9.30 on Fox Sports 1, and that's sports for this Wednesday. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's Talk of the Town. The Nuremberg Community Players present the musical Funny Girl on August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at 7 p.m. and on August 6th at 3 p.m. All tickets are $15, and you can call the number on your screen to purchase tickets. The Hazleton Area Public Library's 2017 Summer Reading Club for grades 1 through 6 continues on August 3rd at 10 a.m. with Nature Walk at the Nescapec State Park. Anyone attending is asked to wear a long sleeve shirt and wear old sneakers or boots. The sign-up for this event is Monday, July 31st. The Cancer Treatment Center on 1701 East Broad Street in Hazleton presents Surviving Together with guest speaker Laura Stitch. The topic will be radiation therapy. This event will be on August 10th and you must RSVP by August 8th. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Gene Andruzzi of Hazleton. Masses Friday at 9.30 a.m. at the Queen of Heaven Parish at Our Lady of Grace Church in Hazleton. Friends may call Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. at the church. The McCune Funeral Home is handling the arrangements. John P. Fucci, formerly of West Hazleton, the Hillary J. Bonin Funeral Home will announce the arrangements. Instead of Libinati, Mass is Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Queen of Heaven Parish at Our Lady of Grace Church in Hazleton. The Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home is assisting the family. And David Sywell of Hazleton. Services are Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name now on SSP TV News, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Today's winner is Anne-Marie Barr of Hazleton. Call now at 570-455-7267, extension 104, for your free movie. Today I took on our intern, Olivia Hoffman, in a game of horse. Did I mention she's also on the Kings College women's basketball team? Find out how the action went in season four of Out of Left Field. It didn't go that great for me. All right, that's enough from today. See you tomorrow. Take it easy, everybody. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.